All right, guys, I saw in the last video, we got the motor all in. Everything's looking pretty good there. So as you know, I had uh, some issues with fitting that stock oil cooler. So I got a whole new setup that I'm working on getting together. So there's the adapter plate. That's from TD Conversions. Um, and then I bought a remote oil filter housing and a filter, and I built this bracket for it right there. So that's plenty of clearance around there. And I feel like that's a pretty good location for it. I mean, I didn't want it. I didn't want it over here because I still got a bunch of stuff to do over here. So, and I didn't want to run lines all the way over there. So I found that, and it's underneath the filter is clear straight to the ground. So when you pull that filter off, when oil comes shooting out of there, it's not going all over everything. So I felt that was a pretty good spot for it. And then, so this is an oil thermostat. So I got a couple lines built. I'm still waiting for more fittings. Um, so I just got, just used up what I had. I just have a few 90s out of a few straight fittings and a couple 45s. So um, when I get those fittings in, I'll show you guys how to build these lines if you're interested. It's pretty fairly easy it's kind of a little bit of a pain to get the the fitting into the line but I'll show you guys how to do it all right guys we're back to working on this oil system here so I'm gonna build some new lines I gotta build one from the thermostat down to the um, oil filter housing there so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that So when you get your line, you want to tape it off um, where you're cutting it, and I use uh, painter's tape, and it doesn't it doesn't uh, fray as much when you're peeling it off. So I'll show you guys. And then what you do to cut it is I use a you can either use a a cutoff wheel or a uh, chop saw. That works a lot better than trying to use some shears or anything. So that's what you want right there. It's not really, I mean, you're always gonna have a little bit of fraying, um, but that's pretty good there. So then get your fitting, pull this side off of it. And this is what we're gonna have to shove over this. So what I do is get the line. And you can kind of hold it between your legs. And then what I do is Get the worst frayed part, so it looks like the bottom here, and kind of cap all that in there. And then hold pressure on it, get a little flat blade, and just kind of work this other side in. And if it's not too frayed, it usually goes pretty easy. Then once you get that, you want to keep pressure on it, and you turn these counterclockwise, so act like you're unthreading a bolt. Keep pressure on it, and those uh, internal threads, or barbs I guess you could say, will suck that fitting onto the line. And you don't want to go too far, you can kind of... I don't know if you guys can see, you're probably not going to be able to see in there, um, but there's the threads. And if you if you pull that line all the way up to the threads, you're not going to be able to get that fitting on all the way. So leave, you can, and if you, if you go too far, you can tell because the, the end of the rubber line starts bunching up and like kind of squishing in a little bit. So just go go to where it's just before those threads so I don't have any soft jaws so I just stick a, a towel in between that tighten that fitting up you don't want it extremely tight because then it squishes the fitting so get this ready and just squirt a little bit of uh, some sort of lubricant inside that 
hose um, and then you just uh, start threading that in and you got also got to watch where the the hose meets the fitting right here and make sure it's not pushing the hose out um, it usually doesn't happen but it can so just keep an eye on that so just thread it in as far as you can these ones here are a 27 millimeter and you want to tighten it you can see these are lined up here pretty much anyway um, so yeah if you got soft jaws you probably won't get these little marks on it I'm not too terribly worried about it so yeah you want to seat that against you want to seat the want the fittings together and then line these up as close as you can just for looks and that should be good to go so I'm gonna get the other line or the other side of this cut and get my other fitting on the other side all right guys got this line all finished up and what do you know I didn't buy enough fittings to finish all this so I'm gonna get done what I can and gonna have to order more so I actually had to move this this uh, cooler because I'm gonna have to fit an intercooler back here too so I'm hoping to have enough room behind this grill to stack the the intercooler and the oil cooler so once that intercooler shows up then I can really actually finish all that so all right working on this uh, intercooler here or the uh, oil cooler so I got it mounted up back there spaced out about 3 16 from that intercooler and so I made those little brackets there for the bottom and I'm just gonna weld those onto that intercooler bracket so I got them tacked up so I'm gonna weld those up and then kind of the same deal build build a L bracket come up and bolt it to the the core support here so fairly simple I got enough room for my lines right here tucked away back in the up kind of up in the course port there so all right so we got the two top mounts built for that oil cooler you can see there's just a little bit of a gap there it's about a eighth inch maybe three sixteenths so and it's the top mount is actually went and bolted it to the radiator or the intercooler so if the top mount of the intercooler, I mean everything's mounted to the intercooler mount, so if the intercooler moves, the oil cooler moves too, so that shouldn't hit ever. So that should work pretty good. I'll pull this back apart and paint everything so I can get it all back together. But yeah, that should uh, definitely do the job. Alright guys, so oil system is done. I'll give you a quick rundown everything I used in it so the adapter plate coming off the block is from TD conversions and it's their latest one it's billet and it has the ORB6 uh, port or threads for the uh, lines coming off it I think the older ones were just half inch MPT so this makes it a lot nicer with the o-ring um, the o-ring threads on there makes for a uh, makes for a better seal so got that I got my pressure sensor on top the stock Toyota and as far as lines go so I got there's my oil filter down there as you guys have seen so the the bottom line coming off that adapter plate goes into the feed for that filter and coming from that filter that line runs up right here into my thermostat I'll show you guys this side so you can see this arrow right here so that's into the thermostat this line goes back to the motor um, 
So when your oil is not at temperature, your thermostat will be closed. So it'll just route, it'll just bypass my cooler, run back to the motor till the oil gets to temperature. Then the, oh, the thermostat will open, and I got two lines running down here, right over here, into my air oil cooler. So it's a pretty much a fail-safe system. Um, it'll always, it should, if that thermostat works as it's designed, it should always stay uh, right about. I think I think it opens at 185 degrees. So it should stay right there. And I think I'm going to do a temp sensor on it too, just to verify it's all working. Um, and there actually is another port. There's another port on my, that adapter plate. A threaded port that I can tap into for that sending unit for that temp gauge. So, yeah, and these are all uh, AN10 lines. I still got to kind of button them up, secure them down. And this one, it was so close, this, the feed from the motor to that, the filter was so close, I kind of had to loop it around. So I have it routed, kind of looped around that steering, which this doesn't really move up and down, it just spins. So I'm just going to take a clamp, clamp that down out of the way of the steering, which I got probably two inches underneath it once I clamp it. So that should be good to go. So yeah, that's the oil system. Just simple little brackets I made. This bracket came with the coo or the thermostat. And then I made brackets. So that's the main intercooler bracket. Welded on some brackets for the lower mount. And then just kind of bent up some brackets for the top mounts here. So it works pretty good, um, and that should be plenty airflow coming through that. And then there's still some popping out the bottom of that intercooler. So I don't know. It should be should be fine. I heard you. I've seen people not even run coolers on these, and they say that it works fine. So I don't expect to see um, the oil getting too hot. Main reason for that is just to keep it keep it warm you don't want cold oil so that's the system